technique to your Better. Yeah, he's almost uh, he's almost done. Yeah, yeah, there's a few. See those little things floating around? Those are the those are the gnats. <laughs> yeah, he's still well, he's he's lops <laughs> he's lopsided. This right side is still a little swollen, but the left side is. This is uh, Everyone sees a... Who, who is this? This is Shadow. This is Shadow. Okay. I get Shadow and... Uh, who is it? Sam? I get a mix of... Yeah. They both spotted. Spent a little time with last time. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, I was reading about uh, pit bulls that... Um, the, the statistics are that the ones who uh, attack people or bite people are the ones that are raised by irresponsible and abuse or do something that makes them angry yeah uh, there is according to this book there is only one really dangerous breed of dog which is a wolf dog well hybrid wolf hybrid right they're unpredictable that's exactly right. that's wow. it. and it's Wolf sanctuary. Yeah, they have all the mostly wolf dog hybrids that the people raise and they couldn't take care of them and zoos don't want them because they're not genetically pure. And uh <laughs> Oh dear. They're all just walking away from you. Uh oh. So why doesn't that woman leave me alone? I just love all so <laughs> every we, one of them here. Yeah, we just want them to retain their own personalities yeah. and we retain ours, but well, shadow, you see, the difference. Have mutual is. respect. And, uh -huh. You picked it right there with Shadow, of course, one of the most dominant voices here as far as personality and leadership. And lead, you gotta take it up way up uh -huh. to a notch above. Yeah. And, but it, and it takes time, too. As you notice, it doesn't happen. Right. Poor thing. He's saying, Ron, can you be my bud? Uh huh. Yeah.
just uh, lay them on the table and we'll have a look at them. The Way of the Horse. Yes. By um, Linda Kohana. Okay. She has the Okona branch and facility in Arizona. And Kim uh, McElroy is the artist. Which one is that? Which one is that? Yeah. That one there? Okay. What's it make you think of? Yeah. <laughs> it just, it seems very, um, they're otherworldly, uh -huh. horses. Very, um, very horses. I have different things that unfold as I go through the, my journey with them and the therapy stuff that I do and the classes and, you know, interactions like this and when I play with them. And, I always come back to the, the power of the relationship. Well, I'm just enjoying our conversation. I can tell you what the cards say in the book if you want. Yes, uh, let's do that. So which card do you want me to? Do? For you, the big one was 33, which is called Bonfire. The subtitles are Sudden Shift, Clearing and Releasing, Fuel for Transformation. The rearing fire horse demands attention, drawing power from his blazing herd. The gift, whether by choice or circumstance, tremendous energy is available to burn through any blocks to a wider view. The challenge, it's no small task to stay present during intense outbursts of power, whether human, equine, or divinely inspired. Be ready to face areas of resistance that have grown into a volatile source of fuel for the fire. for myself. <laughs> yeah. And what was Leah's? Oh, Number six. Number... Okay. Number six? Mm -hmm. Rivalry. And again, some of the cards, the text is not the final word. So that is a fear aggression, competition for limited resources, and moving beyond survival. Two exquisite white horses are caught in the embrace of rivalry, dust flying and mane swirling in the wake of a potential storm. They need only look around and within to realize that each has the power to enliven, protect, and nourish the other. The gift? Rivalry provokes new heights of mastery in sports, in business, and art, and life. Mature competitors who understand that the call to excel is ultimately within the self can benefit from the reflection, inspiration, and camaraderie the other provides. The challenge? When the world is perceived as an endless fight for limited resources, the promise of self-improvement gives way to fear aggression. Everybody loses. Uh, I'm going to a little bit of... Maybe I'm distorting it a little bit, but you know, sort of what's going on with Brandy and Shadow, you know? That's what I was There's saying. a little bit of aggression, and then now they're grazing next to each other again happily. Yeah. That's exactly what so came to my mind while you were reading. reading. The collective well-being outweighs the little scruff up Right. And also, to me, their desire for homeostasis. They don't want to get stressed out for very long. Right. They don't like it. They don't want it. But they will deal with it. Right. They deal with the situation and move as quickly as they can back home. Right. Yeah, it's just in the human that. world, it seems like that often competition and aggression and fighting for limited resources is the baseline that everybody always falls mm -hmm. back to. And with the horses, the aggression comes out when they need to show each other their place, but then they go back, as you said, to all these places. They don't have that ego, they don't oh, work. Well, what would human society look like if we acted like a woman? Mm -hmm. right? Lion heart. Protecting without sacrificing sensitivity. Assertiveness without aggression. The courage to feel and the willingness to act. The horse with the heart of a lion moves steadfastly toward her goal. 
The gift human beings carry the wisdom of both predator and prey. True empowerment depends on finding a balance between the two. The relationship again. The challenge. Cultivating the strength of your inner lion without letting it run amok is tricky. If you don't have enough lion, people will walk all over you. And the horse will too. And you'll lack the conviction and focus to follow your dreams. If you have too much lion, you'll lose the horse. You'll lose the sensitivity that nurtures relationship and creativity. You know, I just read that Nietzsche, when he spoke of the blonde beast, that uh, this one particular author speculates that really uh, he's, he's really thinking of a lion. The blonde, oh. the blonde beast. See. Well, there, ah. yeah. There was a lot of self-sacrifice in his ideas related to the quote Superman. It wasn't this idea that the Superman is um, a superior thing. Like it's, it's, the Superman is like a bridge, like this willingness to evolve beyond. But it's not something good or okay. in, in, in a sort of arbitrary sense of. Oh, we, you know, it's like the dinosaur probably didn't think that the mammals were <laughs> Right. Um, it, it's not what pe ke became a, a, an ideology absolutely. later. It was That's misused. Uh, misused. Misused. Uh, misused. Uh, misused. Uh, misused. Uh, misused. Yes. yes. Right. Anyway. 